What's up everybody? This is Darren from CleptoneGrooves.com. Today we're going to be talking about polar patterns and I'm not talking about the weather. I hate snow. Well, everybody, it's another beautiful Friday, another week behind us. But before you get your weekend started, I've got another great video for you today. Uh, going a little further in depth on microphones because I still get questions on them, mainly the one being, what kind of microphone should I buy? And my question is always this. How are you going to use the microphone? What situation are you going to be using the microphone in? Is it gonna be something where it's sound reinforcement, so a live event that you need to amplify your voice for all your listeners? Or is it gonna be more for a studio application where you'll be doing some recording? Or is it for, say, a situation like what we have here today, uh, I'm shooting a video, I need a microphone to be able to pick my voice up that way. All those things are gonna help you determine what kind of microphone that you're going to reach for. So bringing up those polar patterns that I talked about earlier, that also helps you make that determination once you understand uh, polar patterns. And all polar patterns are is how a microphone picks up its sound. And so when you've been shopping for microphones, no doubt you've probably seen words like omnidirectional or cardioid. Maybe you even have even seen something like hypercardioid. And so those words refer to the polar pattern or pickup pattern of those microphones. So just breaking it down real simply, omnidirectional picks up everything. And if you were to look at it on a graph, it looks like a giant circle. In fact, I'll, I'll throw one up on the screen here. There you can see this is the, the, the shape on a, on a two dimensional graph on paper. It looks like it just picks it up in a circle. But if you look at it on a three dimensional basis, not just a circle, but that microphone picks up uh, sound in a spherical pattern equally from all directions. Now there may be a little bit of a difference in sound from behind the microphone and that's simply because the sound uh, of the higher frequencies um, probably can't really penetrate the back of the microphone as easily as if uh, the sound of higher frequencies are coming from the side uh, where the microphone is facing. But for the most part, um, there is no discrimination on where that sound gets picked up with an omnidirectional microphone. Now, the next graph that you see here, this is a cardioid pickup pattern. The reason being it's called a cardioid is because look at the shape of it. It looks like a heart, right? So this has some of the characteristics of an omnidirectional microphone, but yet it really more so emphasizes the, the sound that it picks up based on where that microphone is pointed. So it picks up less sound from the sides and it looks like it's also designed to reject the sound mostly from behind the microphone as you can see from this graph. And again, keep in mind, this is all a, a three, based on a three dimensional uh, graph. Even though you're looking at it in 2D, that goes the same way if it was looking three dimensional, how that pickup pattern would look. So here's a, a picture of that in 3D there for you. And then another pickup pattern is bi-directional. So in other words, a microphone that picks up sound in two directions. So here's the graph for that. And there's all kinds of uses that you would use this particular microphone uh, pickup pattern for. Um, but really, all the different pickup patterns are based on two of the uh, pickup patterns that I've shown you today. It is omnidirectional, and then there's bidirectional. And then everything else is kind of, well, it pretty much is a combination of the bidirectional and the omnidirectional. Another word for bidirectional, by the way, is figure eight. So if you see someone or hear someone refer to a pickup pattern as being figure eight, now you know what that means. The two sides of the microphone that it, it gets picked up for. Okay, so how does knowing a little bit about polar patterns help you to make an informed decision on what kind of microphone to buy? Well, let's break it down and make it a little simpler. You have omnidirectional microphones versus directional microphones. Anything that's not an omnidirectional microphone is pretty much directional if you think about it. So let's start with omnidirectional microphones. Another benefit of omnidirectional microphones is that more often than not, they have a flatter frequency response than your directional microphones. And they also do not have uh, the, the, the effect that's called proximity effect. 
which means the closer you get to the microphone or the further you get away, the bass is either enhanced or lost, um, like a directional microphone would do. Um, so omnidirectional, again, picking up from anywhere, uh, all around, you know, from different sound sources. If you have that in a uh, lavalier microphone that's clipped to you, that also means that as you are walking and talking at a live event, or maybe for your video, if you need to turn your head to the left or to the right, um, that omnidirectional microphone is still going to pick you up pretty evenly no matter where you turn your head, which is good because some uh, lapel microphones uh, or lavalier microphones, as soon as you turn your head, you, you all of a sudden have a, a loss in the clarity or the volume of the, the speaker who's wearing that microphone simply because it might be a cardioid uh, lavalier microphone. Um, now, the other thing is that omnidirectional microphones are less susceptible to wind noise, uh, which is good for, you know, words that pop, like P's or B's or T's. So you have less of that, um, those plosives going on when you're using an omnidirectional microphone. And two of the main reasons why anyone would ever consider purchasing a directional microphone versus an omnidirectional microphone is because, again, it's directional. So whatever it's pointed at, it's going to resist the noise from the direction that it's not pointed at, thereby emphasizing whatever the subject is that you're trying to capture or record. Um, the other thing, too, is it will help to suppress some of the reverb and reflections that bounce off the bare surfaces uh, in the room that you're recording in. Uh, so two really big benefits. And again, as I mentioned earlier about the omnidirectional microphones, they don't have the proximity effect, um, but this can be used to great effect on directional microphones. Uh, when you wanna beef up your voice just a little bit, maybe you're in the studio and you're reading or you're singing or whatever it is that you're doing, um, the closer you get to the microphone, uh, the more that low end can be enhanced. Uh, and give you uh, some nice, low, rich tones uh, that you can play with later uh, when you do your editing uh, for whatever the project is that you're using it for. All right, so those were some additional details for you to keep in mind when looking for the perfect microphone for your application. Uh, but really quick before I go, I mentioned frequency response very briefly earlier. And if you go to Amazon or B&H, they're usually pretty good about uh, listing the frequency response of certain microphones and if you don't see that I would look for that as an audio guy I am a hog I want as much frequency of the spectrum that I can get out of a microphone so if you see a microphone that says well it works from 100 Hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz or 100 Hertz to 16 or something like that I'm not a fan of that because if it's rolled off that much of the low end you know, I'm, I, I'm always of the mindset, I can always do that later in my editing, but if it's already rolled off and I need that frequency on the low end, some of that, that low end, I can't really get that back. You can try to enhance it with EQ, but if it's just not there to begin with, there's really nothing you can enhance. So a good frequency response for me, I'm gonna say as much as you can get. My microphone that I use, my shotgun microphone, goes from 40 all the way to 20 kilohertz. Um, and there's microphones that go even lower than that. Now, of course, you don't really hear that much low information on the human voice down in the 40 and the 20 hertz range. Um, but again, it's nice to have that in case there's something special I want to do with that frequency or, or enhance it or whatever. It's still there for me to chop off if I need to chop it off rather than the microphone taking it away before I even get a chance to play with it, right? So that's what I would recommend. Get a microphone that has a wide frequency response on the frequency spectrum. Don't go for that stuff that chops off at 100 or more. You wanna go at least down to, I don't know, 40, 20 if you can get it. But of course, all that costs money, but hey, you know what? You get what you pay for when it comes to audio. So that's a little bit of information I've got for you today on uh, microphones and some further considerations. And next week, we'll come back with another video. But until then, here's to getting better audio at home, guys. Yeah.